there was plenty to like about the old Nissan Leaf. It had a driving range of 155 miles, a smart interior, and offered the kind of low running costs which electric car buyers are looking for. Towards the end of its life, though, it was beginning to look a bit, well, outclassed by more modern rivals such as the Renault Zoe or Volkswagen e-Golf. And that is why there's this, the all-new Nissan Leaf. With a greater driving range and a bigger focus on safety than before, the new Leaf could, on paper at least, walk away with class honours here. But does it convince you to buy an electric car and how well does it compare to its key rivals? That's the question we'll answer in this review along with how practical it is, what it's like inside and what it's like to live with. And remember, if at the end of it all you're interested in buying a new car, including the Nissan Leaf here, then just go to whatcar.com and click on our new car deal section to see how much we can save you. It could potentially be thousands. First though, let's take this new Nissan Leaf out for a drive. Now, unlike in most cars, lifting off the accelerator in an electric car like the Nissan Leaf causes it to slow down. And that's the car's regenerative brakes at work, harvesting extra energy from braking to feed back into the battery and help you go further. Now, in the Leaf and in most other electric cars, you also have an extra mode called B mode, which exacerbates that effect and causes you to slow down even faster. But the Leaf goes one step further because if I put the car into its so-called e-pedal mode, then as you can tell, when I take my foot off the accelerator there, the whole car starts to slow down to the point where I could effectively drive it using only one foot. Now this Leaf is no slouch. It will reach 60 miles an hour in 8.2 seconds, which is faster than both of its key rivals. And it will keep going onto a limited top speed of 89 miles per hour. The big question though is range. That's the thing electric car buyers are looking for, how far you can go between charges. And in the Leaf, that's an official 235 miles. A word of warning though, because the tests which decide that official range are wholly unrepresentative of real world driving. So you're not likely to get anywhere close to that in the real world. In fact, when we tested the Leaf at around 5 degrees Celsius, the kind of temperature you're likely to find in winter in the UK, we got a range of 108 miles. Now that's more than the Volkswagen e-Golf, but less than the Renault Zoe. Like with most electric cars, if you put your foot down, you do get an instant surge of power, and the Leaf feels a little akin to a hot hatch in that respect. It stays slightly more upright than both of its key rivals through corners, and has a slightly firmer ride around town too. The interior of this Nissan Leaf is fundamentally a big improvement over that of the old car, but this driving position is a bit flawed. You sit nice and high up, but the fact that there's no reach adjustment in this steering wheel means that you're likely going to sit with it either too far away from you or pulled too close to it, and that can hamper your comfort on longer trips. At least you get a good view out of the front of the car, making it easy to see where you're going to park. However, if you want to look over your shoulder to the rear, the car's heavily stylized back end can make viewing difficult. Fortunately though you get front and rear parking centers and even a reversing camera to help. This 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system comes as standard on every Leaf, and it is loaded with features. You get DAB digital radio, sat-nav, Bluetooth and USB connectivity, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that means you can control most of the features of your smartphone using the car's interface. It's mostly easy to use too, thanks to these logical menus and big icons, and you can use these shortcut buttons on either side too. Less impressive is how low resolution this screen is. It's it's really not as sharp as what you'll find in something like a Volkswagen e-Golf. Interior space is where the Nissan Leaf starts to gain an advantage over the rival Renault Zoe because it is significantly larger inside. And that's most evident here in the front where you've got space to stretch out and there's also plenty of space for your odds and ends. These door bins will easily take a medium sized water bottle. There's a cubby here for your mobile phone, a large central storage area here under the central armrest and of course a glove box as well. Move to these rear seats and the Leaf is similarly spacious and two six-footers can sit one behind the other and still have enough room. It's a different story when it comes to headroom though because as you can see my head is pretty much touching the roof of this Leaf. There's less than what you'll find in a Volkswagen e-Golf and as is usually the case here try and fit three people on this rear bench and everyone will feel the pinch not least because this middle passenger has to straddle this tunnel in the floor. 
There's more space in the boot of the Nissan Leaf than what you'll find in either a Renault Zoe or Volkswagen e-Golf. So loading a couple of large holiday suitcases or a large weekly shop should present no trouble. There's no height adjustable boot floor on offer though. So you're going to have to contend with this rather significant load lip when heaving items over. You can at least extend this load bay if you need to using toggles on the back of the seat and that folds them forwards and gives you a larger area if you need to move some furniture or some DIY. The Leaf, along with its key rivals from Renault and Volkswagen, qualifies for the lowest band of company car tax, so it makes a good deal of sense for company car drivers at the moment. It's worth remembering though that if you buy privately on a PCP finance deal, as most buyers will, you'll need to spend a lot of time in the Leaf and do a lot of miles before it starts to save you real money. It's also worth noting that charging an electric car is vastly cheaper than paying for petrol or diesel, and charging the Leaf here takes eight hours for a standard seven kilowatt home charging unit or just 40 minutes using the kind of fast charging equipment you're likely to find at a motorway service station. You do get plenty of kit here in the Leaf, especially if you go for one of our recommended end connector models, which come with 17 inch alloy wheels, heated seats, front and rear parking sensors, climate control and even keyless entry. You also get automatic emergency braking and six airbags. This Leaf is one of the best electric cars around. It offers excellent performance, a big boot, and plenty of kit. In fact, we'd go far to say that it's one of the most tempting propositions for electric motoring we've found. Now, for plenty more on the new Nissan Leaf, including our full 16-point review, head to whatcar.com, where you'll also find our new car deal section. And if you click on that, you can see how much we can save you on your next car. The link to that is in the description box below. But remember, before you do anything else, click subscribe to never miss another video. Video.